exciting episode of Biologic Science News. Today I want to talk about a really simple, yet elegantly effective technique for taking high-quality images of living insects, which was developed by entomologists Joanna Konopka and Danny Poinapin from Robarts Research Institute at Western University in Ontario, Canada. Now, a common problem in entomology research is that insects are tricky to take good images of. They're tiny, and when they're alive, they squirm around a lot. They don't like being held or restrained, and they wiggle and shake and wave their legs and antenna and just flail around in panic. To image them successfully, researchers pretty much have to kill them so that they stop moving. And so while a dead insect isn't moving, and it isn't getting your picture blurry or out of focus, the data it gives you is static. It's a still image taken out of the movie reel of the insect's life. While alive, the insect is growing and digesting, and stuff is just happening inside the guts of the bug. When you kill the insect, this movement stops, and so you don't see it. You don't see all of this growth. You just see the insect's body as it was in the slice of time immediately before its death. Or I guess immediately after. Kanopka and Poinapen wanted to try and image the insect like this, but without killing it so that they could understand its internal movement and activity. Their solution was to simply expose the insect to carbon dioxide, which lulls them into a form of sleep or hibernation. While knocked out, the insects could be sufficiently imaged with a micro-CT scan, and when this was done multiple times over the course of several days, the researchers could create compilations of images detailing on the scale of microns, changes to the insect's internal anatomy and physiology that they never could have seen before. They were quite literally able to see the rudimentary internal vasculature of the insects, of their feeding organs and digestive tubes, and the pipes of their reproductive organs. By taking multiple images, they could see how these various organs and structures changed over time, how they expanded or contracted, swelled or receded. Kanopka was the lead entomologist on the project, and about the results, she said, and I quote, I was absolutely awed. This gives a wholly new perspective of what they are with they being the army worms and Colorado potato beetles that they looked at in the study. This kind of breakthrough is both exciting and reassuring. It's exciting because it's something new. It's a new technique for imaging insects. It's a new way to use an old tool that entomologists can use to better understand the arthropods they study. This will only improve our understanding of insects and their physiology from here on out. But it's also reassuring because it shows how effective interdisciplinary work can be when it's done correctly. The development of this imaging technique took a lot of input from a lot of different people. Those who worked at the imaging lab, like Danny Poinapen, they knew what the CT scanner could do in a medical context, but they didn't really know the potential for studying insects. The entomologists came up with the idea and they presented it to the imaging specialists, and they worked together to make the new technique possible. David Holdsworth, another researcher at the Robarts Research Institute, said, and I quote, This is a great example of something that would not be possible in a typical biology lab, nor in a typical medical research lab. We were able to draw together the strength of our diverse expertise and resources. Hopefully this encourages more interdisciplinary research in the future that leads to awesome new breakthroughs, just like this new live scan imaging technique that has the potential to revolutionize our understanding of insects.